A rotational capacity test evaluates the presence and efficiency of a lubricant and the compatibility of the heavy hex structural bolt assembly. The goal of this test is to ensure that the required bolt tension is achieved. Per the ASTM F3125 specifications, each galvanized assembly consisting of a bolt, nut, and washer must be tested. Additionally, plain and other coated assemblies should be tested if specified when the purchase order is placed. Today we're testing a 7 8 by 2 and a half A325 bolt with an A563 DH nut and an F436 washer. These components have been hot dip galvanized per the customer's request. Let's get started. First, install the correct plate and bushing into the Skidmore Wilhelm device, also called a bolt tension calibrator. Place the bolt assembly into the device so that between three and five threads are in the grip. Add spacers until flush or one to two threads are sticking out. The F436 washer should be directly under the nut. Do not stack out washers. No more than two washers should ever be used during a rotational capacity test. Tighten the joint by hand or with a wrench to a low level of initial tension to start the test at the correct point. This tension should not exceed the maximum initial tension with a tolerance of plus two or minus zero kips. Attach the torque multiplier and electric motor and add the required initial tension or kips. Match mark the bolt end, nut, and the calibrator's faceplate with a straight line. Match marking ensures that the bolt is not turning while you're rotating the turning element. Next, set the dial to zero on the torque multiplier. This is where we check the required amount of rotation. Once the hand on the device begins to move, release the dial. When the bolt reaches the required installation tension, stop rotation and use a torque wrench to record the torque. Note that when measuring torque, it is necessary to rotate the nut an additional five degrees. Most machines have a pre-marked size for the installation tension, but you'll need to measure the torque separately as torque is not the same thing as tension. Once the torque is recorded, reattach the torque multiplier and the electric motor to the device. Now it's time to test rotation. Tighten the bolt until the rotation reaches the total rotation required. Record the tension shown by the hand on the dial, then record it again. Now reverse the tension on the bolt. Once the tension is relieved, remove the assembly from the device and check for damages. These can include thread stripping, thread shearing, or torsional or tensile failure on the bolt. In other words, cracks. If any of the damages are present, the bolt fails the test. If the bolt passes, place the washer and nut on the bolt. Make sure the nut will thread so at least two to three threads are sticking out. Once the bolt has been tested, you can discard it in a proper receptacle like a scrap bucket. Repeat the rotational capacity test for a set of two samples, record the results appropriately, and include component production lot numbers. Rotational capacity test failures happen from time to time. Here are a few reasons your bolt might fail a ROCAP test. Improper job site storage. It's imperative that your bolt assemblies are stored in a closed container while on the job site. When bolts are exposed to the elements or placed under a tarp, the water-soluble lubricant can evaporate or wash away depending on the weather. Improperly calibrated torque wrenches. Before starting your project, ensure that all of your tools are properly calibrated to provide an accurate test. Warped plates on the Skidmore Wilhelm device. When plates show signs of wear, be sure to replace them prior to use. Stacking washers to shim longer bolts. It's against specifications to overstack washers. Refer to your fastener specifications regarding washers prior to testing. When a bolt fails, many authorities give the contractor an option to clean, relube, and retest the bolts. If a second failure occurs, the lot is rejected. Refer to your project's documentation for requirements regarding row cap failure. Purchasing nuts and bolts from the same manufacturer is beneficial, as this ensures the manufacturer has more control over the full assembly. If a lot does fail the rotational capacity test, you know who to reach out to to troubleshoot. For more information regarding fastener testing and to view accompanying charts for the ROCAP test, visit our website, behamfast.com.